Good morning, guys. You know what day is? My home Mondays. Right. First, first things first. I've had loads of uh, lovely messages again this week. That um, back to my cheery, jolly self, which is great. Um, people loving that. <laughs> they love. They love me. Uh, you you lot love me smiling. You don't like me a bit um, down in the dumps, which I can understand that. I don't like being down in the dumps. Um, but no. Good, uh, good week this week. I've got a couple of days off now. I will admit, I've, uh, I've had a few days of I can't be asked to do anything because, like, I've been doing so much overtime and that, and then I finally stopped. And I, no, I know I need to do stuff, and I've got plenty of stuff to do. But it's like, get to that situation, you're just like, I can't be asked to do it, and you just sit there and do nothing, and you just end up watching Netflix or something, which, you know, it's not productive, but. I've got a few more days off and I'm going to crack on with some stuff, but I I've been going out for some walks and, uh, you know, so I thought I'd come out and up the game again. i come for a little walk, found a little stream. Thought I'd uh, film at home Mondays. Let's crack on with the questions, shall we? All right, first one. How much LPG can your motorhome store? Is it enough and how long does it keep you going for? A few questions on that one. Um, my motorhome, I've got two... Uh, safe fuel tanks, I've done a video uh, uh, on them and it, they're 7.5 kilos each, so you know, 15 kilos of, of LPG on, on board when they're full. Um, they, it, did, is it enough? If I could have had more, I definitely would have had more because then you can obviously last longer. Uh, how long it lasts? To be fair, it's not really a fair comparison with me because I usually work nights. So I'm in the truck on the road at work at night when it's cold. So I don't use the heating that much. Um, only in winter when it is cold through the day. Um, I use it 24 seven for my fridge. But apart from that, it's just a bit of hot water and, and the fridge. I don't really use much heating to be fair. So in the summer, it can last a month, six weeks, depending on how much you're using. Yeah, I'd say month to five weeks. Um, in, in the winter, I think there are a few people around, so I'm just, uh, yeah, making sure that no one's gonna just appear out of nowhere. Um, but I'm, I'm well down here, I've had to cross, cross, as you can see, treacherous, treacherous waters to get to where I am. <laughs> Um, in winter, you know, you're looking in between, depends on how cold it is and what's going on, um, two, two to four weeks, two, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a pinch of salt question, you can't, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt because it's, everyone's going to use stuff different, so, and my circumstances are definitely different, so, uh, next question, how much did you pay for your motorhome? £18,000, that was an easy one. Now this question, I'm going to be honest, uh, I don't know any legal standing with it, I have no idea. So the question is, the no, over parking, the no overnight parking signs that are dotted around the country, are they legal or are they just a wishful, wishful deterrent from local councils and local police? Uh, I have no idea if they're legal or not. Um, the way I would deal with them is if I was driving along, it was a little lay-by, you know, looks safe enough for me to stop, as in road-wise. Someone's not gonna cave into me, it's a little bit off the, off, the, off the road. And it said no overnight parking. If I'm in the middle of nowhere, really, and it's, you know, it's a quiet place, hey, I'm gonna do it, I'll park there, you know. What's the worst that's gonna happen? They, someone's gonna, the police are gonna knock on your door, they're gonna come along and they're gonna say, mate, you're not that parky. You say, sorry, mate, I was, I was tired. You know, I'll, can, I, can I finish the night or do I have to leave now? As long as you're polite and, and you know, everything with them, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if it was built up areas, touristy areas and all that, then they're gonna be on you, I reckon. Um, like I say, I don't, don't know if this is legal or not. I don't really know anything about it. I don't really have them signs around where I am, so I'm pretty lucky. But yeah, if, if it was a built up area, busy area, and there's a sign, I would probably steer clear. If it was in the middle of nowhere, then why not? Risk it for a chocolate biscuit, why not? Next question. You said you follow a ketogenic lifestyle, 
could you share some information about this, please? Uh, I'm not gonna go through loads of information in here. If people do want me to do a little video about that, then drop it in the comments below that you will want that. Uh, other than that, I will leave some links in the description below on how to find some more information about what I do and what I follow. Um, Cause I know a few people have asked, but not tons of people have asked. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna bore everyone. I don't wanna bore everyone with, uh, you know, my eating habits <laughs> um, as such, unless people really, really want it. But like I said, I'll leave some uh, notes below so you can follow some notes and some links. Um, related to that question is, how is the weight loss and diet going um, and getting healthy? Uh, well, I can't be definitive because I haven't gone back to the scales that I started it on because I've been weighing myself on the same set of scales. Um, <laughs> if this is getting a bit wobbly, it's because like it's fully extended that's what we said. Um, and it's, the one arm's getting a bit, a bit of an ache in it now. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I used to weigh myself at the gym every week, and then you know go from there because then it's a, I'm relying on one, one figure from one calibrated scales. I did manage to weigh myself the other day. Um, a friend put some scales out the front door, and I just went and jumped on, and then jumped off and ran away. And they said I've gone down an extra five, five kilos, five, six kilos. So, hey, I mean, I'm taking that with a pinch of salt because I don't know if their, their scales from the ones I've been weighing on. Um, but yeah, it's going down. I can feel my t-shirts getting a bit looser. So it's all good, really. It's all good. Uh, next one. Just watched your video about finding water for full-time van life. But what do you do about drinking water? That's what I drink. At the, at the present situation, I've had a lot of bottled water on board, so I can use the bottled water for drinking and the onboard water for cooking and showering and the toilet. Uh, so I can restrict what I'm using and I can make it last a lot longer. Um, but normally I've got, well, I just fill up from where I do, like garages and industrial estates and you know, have, what, have, what have you. And yeah, I just use that, it's fine. I've got a filtered drinking tap in the kitchen. I have got filters uh, on board if I do want to filter it and if I felt so. And you can buy little tester kits on like Amazon. I've got to change hands. I'll make, I'll make. <laughs> um, you can buy little testers if you really wanted to, um, to test the water before you put it in the tank. So that's not a problem. Uh, next one, have you ever used those mini air conditioners, air quotes, uh, that, you fill, that you fill with water, like cold water or ice? Um, no, I do know about them, I have seen them a lot, I have thought about them, but I've looked into them, and obviously it's putting humidity into the air, that cold water is going into the air, so then you're putting moisture into the air of the motorhome or the camper van or the van conversion which you don't really want moisture in there. And especially when you're trying to be cool, you're, it feels nice because it's blowing cold air on you, but that moisture's going everywhere and you're just gonna get, you're just raising the moisture level in the motorhome or, or whatever overall. I just find if you open enough of the windows, even if you open a crack um, and the roof vents and the fan, and you've got enough fans, this is the thing with solar because when it's hot, that means it's sunny, nine times out of 10, which means you've got a lot of solar coming in, which means you can have as many fans or the biggest fans proper blaring away to try and cool the air down. So you shouldn't have a problem with power. So yeah, just crack on with fans. Put a few low to the ground to bring the cold air up and circulate that, and then make sure there's areas that it can get out in the roof and then the hot air can just disappear and do one. <laughs> right, next one. Um, how, how are you getting your hair cut in the current times? I do my hair myself, I have done for years. I've got a pair of uh, wireless clippers that I just recharge and I just, when this gets too long and this gets too long, I just start here and then end here and dodge the eyebrows, um, yeah. Every now and again, I miss a bit like the back there, but like it's a little, small little clump and I find it the next day after I've looked an idiot for a day. But no, I just clip it all off and I, I wait until it gets to a whatever length and then I just do bare blade. So 
I don't have to think, right, have, is it all level? Because if I'm trying to do like a number two all over, it's never going to look level at all. So I know I've been doing my own hair. Um, and now you lot are all copying me with a COVID cut. <laughs> and some of you don't know, oh, look funny. Oh, Jesus. Right, last question. How do you manage with the doctors and the dentist with no address? Now, I did do a video on this, so I'll link that. Uh, I don't know if he's up if it's up here or up here, but I'll link that and I'll link it below. Um, and I'm registered at a family's house, so I'm still registered at my doctor's there. That's no problem. With my work, I have got a private GP care plan, so I can go online and get a GP appointment there and do a video chat with a GP. Um, but you can um, walk into a doctor's and be an outpatient, be a like a tourist patient, I can't remember what it's called, but you can temporarily register and get work done because you're away from your home. So if you was in, in London, for instance, that area, and your home's in, in Scotland or in Manchester or, or Birmingham, you're, and you're hanging down this area because you're looking after a friend or a family, you can't really nip up there just to go to your doctors. So they allow you to temporarily register just to get an appointment and get some meds or get something sorted. So there it is, it is all doable. You just have to look into things and you know, there's a few extra steps. But right guys, that is this week's My Home Mondays. That's all the questions. If you've got any questions for next week, please drop them in the comments below and any of my videos and I'll pick them up or drop me an email or at darren at the home .com or on my Instagram, send me a message and I will catch you in the next one. Take it easy, guys. Have a great week. Bye.